Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking the first two episodes of Total Drama Pukitet Pukit Kit Pukitu Island. Ugh. Uh, I'm going to need to work on getting the name of this down. They said it a several times during the two episodes that aired today. Uh, I still haven't quite nailed it. But anyway, uh, after a nice long break, Total Drama is back. And uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty solid. There's definitely some good stuff going on here. There's some stuff that uh, I'm not so happy with. The thing that we need to kind of admit right here out of the gate is that these are all completely new characters that we're dealing with right out um, right from the start, and that thus we just don't have the emotional attachment that we did to the previously used characters and that we got during Total Drama All Stars. Which uh, yeah, I really do like that. That's going to be the format from now on with Total Drama is introduce a group of new characters and then the next time around do. Uh, characters from past seasons uh so it's really kind of the best of both worlds but with having to bring in new characters at least once a season uh we always end up with some wheat and we always end up with some chaff so let's just kind of go through uh what we've got in terms of uh, the characters and uh see where things ha take us from there uh, now, first of all, the uh, thing that really jumped out at me when I was watching this uh, these two episodes tonight is that the animation quality is really, really good. I guess they must have uh, over at folks over at Fresh TV must have uh, bought some new software or bought some new hardware or something because visually, this is I think the strongest that Total Drama has ever been. I mean, some of the stuff when like Sky was uh, bouncing around and doing all those backflips and stuff, that was some really, really great animation. Beautiful stuff. And I like how they're using it where it makes sense to use that. And basically not kind of not beating you over the head with the special effects. Unlike some things such as, I don't know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles trailer that they would not stop playing during the commercials. I mean... I'm all for that new, that, uh, at least new to me, Guardians of the Galaxy trailer that they showed once. Every commercial break. It's reminding us that Michael Bay is out there making a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. And that it's probably going to end up being the second best of the live-action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies. Because, well, it's Michael Bay, so there's no way in the world they're going to be able to top the, uh, the original live-action Ninja Turtles movie. But then... Uh, I'm of an age where I have a great nostalgic fondness for that film, so... But anyway, back to Total Drama. Yep, we need to talk about Canadi animated Canadian teenagers, not mutant ninja turtles. Uh, okay, so let's just sort of start running through all of our characters here. And uh, I'm not even going to... like The confused bears and the whatever fish people... Eh, uh, again, <laughs> gonna need a little time to get uh, get all of this around my head. So uh, let's start off with a two for one here with uh, Amy and Sammy, who I'm gonna try and call her by her proper name just to be nice. Uh, Sammy looks like she could use somebody who could uh, be who should be nice to her. Uh, not a whole lot to say about these two. Uh, just that so far, I think Sammy is probably the most sympathetic character that we've seen so far. And we're already seeing the first steps towards her eventually snapping and uh, probably just kicking Amy's ass, most likely. So I think she's probably, we're going to be looking at her as sort of being the Zoe this season. Uh, Sammy, I mean. And uh, with, <laughs> with uh, Amy taking on the role of Heather at her absolute worst. And to be completely fair to Heather, I don't think Heather at her absolute worst was as bad as Amy is. I mean, she's just awful nonstop. I mean, Heather was always a schemer and a manipulator, but, you know, she wasn't really... Oof. Yeah. But, you know, maybe I'm just sort of seeing Heather with rose-colored glasses just because I thought um, her that uh, season three Heather was really one of the strongest characters that the show's ever had. 
So, uh, you know, let's let's see if I can remember this all properly and just kind of let's start off with the girls, I guess. Uh, Scarlet, the red-haired nerdy chick. Not a whole lot to say about her. Just sort of st strikes me as uh, somebody who's very much go to go to the Velma archetype and just run with it. Uh, I don't have great hopes of her becoming a terribly interesting character or lasting all that long. Uh, Jasmine, our resident uh, Australian stereotype from about 1989. Um, well, I can't. I imagine. Uh, I imagine the Australian viewers of Total Drama will probably either kind of roll their eyes and go, "Oh God, not again," or just take the whole joke with um, that trademark Australian sense of uh, good humor, uh, which I was pleased to. That I got to see quite a bit of when I actually went on vacation to Australia back. Uh, yeah, geez, yeah, next month it'll have been two years since I was there. Wow. <laughs> but no, I, I had an awesome time in Australia. It was that was great. Uh, but um, so we are seeing a few things here. Like she, they do note that she is notably taller than everybody. Uh, and that her size tends to intimidate guys and. Uh, from uh, what I know from my female friends who are, I do, one of my, I do have one of my, uh, fe one female friend who is like seriously, seriously tall for a woman. And uh, that's kind of been a real issue for her for uh, quite a few years. Well, at least until she got married and then that, that sort of problem went away. But uh, that is something that she has remarked on to me uh, more than once that some guys are very intimidated by women who are taller than them. I've, um, I've never really understood that very much, but uh, I'm kind of on the tall side myself, so I very rarely meet uh, women who are, uh, you know, my height or greater. So, and what I do, I've usually actually found it kind of attractive, but you know, that's just my particular quirks. Uh, let me see, who else do we got? Sky uh, is another character. Oh, well, that. Um, I think is going to be another strong competitor. It's nice to see that um, you can look at her and you can. It's very clear that Sky is is Asian. With Heather, you, people had to kind of go to the folks that made the show and say, like, "Hey, is Heather Asian?" And they go, "Yeah, yeah, she's Asian." Although the one time we did get to see her parents, it looks like, if I remember correctly, her dad had blonde hair, so maybe it was actually uh, she's half Caucasian, half Asian, and maybe that's why it's a little bit hard to tell. Um, uh, from having met folks who are of mixed Caucasian and Asian backgrounds, you know, sometimes it, it's a real roll of the dice. Sometimes you get folks that are about what you would expect from people of mixed race, and then you occasionally get folks who veer very, very strongly towards um, one of their one or the other parents' racial characteristics, and you have to look very closely in order to spot. Uh, anything else that's uh, not sort of what you would expect from a person of that race. But anyway, um, not really you know, much to say about her except that she looks like, um, actually sort of reminds me of what you would expect from somebody like Lightning except that they were apparently a pretty nice person. So I have a feeling that Sky's going to be a, a pretty strong competitor. And uh, Apparently, she did note that Dave seems to be having a bit of a crush on her. So that and uh, Jasmine mentioning that uh, Dave, that Sean was kind of cute. I think we can safely say that romance is going to be in the air this season. And you know what? I, I, I'm okay with that. We're losing romance on Legend of Korra, so you know, I, I guess I got to get that in my uh, Western animation somewhere, right? Uh, let me see. Hmm. Who all who all am I missing? Let me see here. Uh, yeah, I know I'm missing Sugar, so but I really would prefer not to think about her. But uh, I guess there's no getting around that. So Sugar. Okay, obviously she's a riff on Honey Boo Boo, and yeah, I, I got nothing I can really say about that because. I, I just feel bad about, you know, ripping on a character who's obviously based on a real person and that person who's somebody is being somebody who's still a kid. So yeah, just uh just don't feel quite right about that. But uh 
Uh, uh, she's definitely a character I'm really will be glad when she gets shoved into the cannon. Uh, I think she's going to last for a little while, though, because they're obviously building a conflict with her and Ella. And I think that'll last for at least one or two more episodes. But um, Sugar strikes me as a character who's got a, also got a fairly limited shelf life. And uh, I think the next time the axe swings back to that team, it'll, be, it'll probably be her that goes. And uh, let's see, Ella... Well, let me see here. Uh, obviously, obviously, she's a riff on Snow White, and she's doing the whole musical Disney princess thing, which is cute and surprisingly effective. Uh, but uh, I just look at her, and I keep think, keep expecting her to just sort of go out there and start doing horrible and crazy things and swearing. But that's just because. Uh, when I think of geek instructions of Disney princesses, my mind always jumps to Princess Clara from uh, the show Drawn Together. And uh, that's a show, if you've never seen it, from about 10 years ago. It, it, it built itself as uh, uh, the first animated uh, reality show. Uh, and it did uh, air before Total Drama did by, I think, something in the neighborhood of about three years uh, on Comedy Central. So they were able to employ that more adult uh, South Park style of humor towards animated characters. And, oh boy, did they go to some very, very wrong places with those characters. And, uh, yeah, uh, I have all the seasons of that show on DVD. <laughs> so worth it. Uh, but anyway, let me see. I'm just running everybody through my head. Yeah. Okay, I think that covers the girls, so let's just talk about the guys. Um, Beardo. Man, was I glad to see him go. Uh, just the whole... Again, when I talked about... If you remember my last season review... Last reviews... My reviews for when I did the... The, uh, the first ratchet round of new characters, I uh, complained a lot about how they were obviously not having B talk simply as a way to save money on the show. And with Beardo, it's really the same thing. And frankly, I think that's kind of a cheat. And uh, I really do expect better. But then again, he, you gotta, nobody really cares that much about the character who gets voted off the island first. I don't really think there's any legions of Stacy fans out there. So, you know, whatever on that. But uh, if you join me when I was doing the uh, live tweet of these episodes, uh, I said I kind of mentioned that he reminded me of the the, um, the black dude from the Police Academy movies. God, I am really, really going back to uh, referencing movies from the 80s a lot this time around. I mean, I reference movies from the 80s a lot in my reviews, but this, I think, I think I'm going for a record here. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's just because I was fooling around with some Star Wars stuff earlier. I, I don't know. But anyway... Not a lot to say about him. Leonard. Now, as a guy who's been playing D&D &D for like 14 years on and off, uh, more than a few of the things he said, uh, I kind of I, I like, yeah, I know what he, I know that spell that he's trying to do there. Well, then again, every, I think everybody knows Fireball. I mean, it's Fireball. But uh, yeah, his Leonard is, is, if you didn't catch it, he's a LARPer. His main thing is he's actually a LARPer, and that's why li that's live action role play. That's why he's in a wizard costume. Um, I've never actually been to a D&D game where anybody dressed up in a costume. Uh, they don't, they don't do that. It's just usually, um, it's usually just dudes in, uh, t-shirts that could probably be, use a washing, a wash or two, to be perfectly honest. No, just kidding. But yeah, um, yeah, I don't, I don't even want to talk about the one time I tried LARPing. Oh man, boy, that was just like, okay, I've been at this for a half an hour and this sucks. I'm out of here. So, yeah, uh, I was pretty glad to see Leonard go. Again, he's sort of, a, as a character, he's just a one-trick pony. And we've already seen the black nerdy dude with Cameron. So, no big surprise, he was number two to get the axe. Rodney, the lovesick farm boy. For some reason, I look at him, and you know what he reminds me of? The characters from the Dennis the Menace newspaper comic strips, for some reason. I swear to God, that's what the first thing that jumps to my mind. 
And the second is him trying to sell me some Dairy Queen ice cream, because uh, Dairy Queen used the Dennis the Menace cartoon strip characters a bunch back in the 80s! 80s! I'm living in the 80s! And now I'm probably going to get taken down by YouTube for copyright violations or something from some song whose name I don't even remember. Uh, but anyway... Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I I don't really have a whole lot to say about Rodney. I'm really not impressed with him as a character. And I guess falling in love every five minutes with one of the female characters is going to be his shtick. Uh, yeah, that's that's probably going to be amusing for a little while. I, I imagine he'll probably be a middle of the pack cut. Dave, I swear to God, Dave looks like he could probably be one of Noah's cousins. But uh, that that's about all I really have to say about him. That and, you know, I think they're just taking sort of Trent's OCD about the number nine and stuff and just translating it into good old-fashioned germ phobia for Dave. So, I don't know. He, he doesn't really stand out to me too much. Although I do like that he is, within his team, uh, the voice of reason for the most part. I mean, Sky seems like a pretty reasonable person, but the whole, oh, the team has voted we should go ahead and do this stupid thing anyway... Yeah. So I think we'll I think Dave will manage to hang in there for a will manage to hang in there for a little while and then just maybe snap and that'll ultimately what gets him cut, as it does so many total drama contestants. Uh let's see, who else do we have to talk about? Uh Sean uh as somebody said on Twitter, like this guy has obviously been spending way too much time watching The Walking Dead. But apart from that, uh, you know, he does seem to be a fairly level-headed guy, and his survival skills definitely give him a big edge on total drama. We've already talked about what's going on him with him and possibly being a romantic interest for Jasmine. And so, you know, he definitely stands, strikes me as one of the better characters to come along. He's got an, I mean, he's got a shtick, but so do all the characters. But... He does seem to be, I think, a little bit more thought out. So we'll see what happens with him. Uh, not a whole lot to say about Topher. He doesn't really strike me as being super interesting. And you could tell that Chris is he that he and Chris are eventually going to come to blows uh, metaphorically. But uh, that should be pretty interesting to see. And, and I do like how if you look at Topher's clothes, you can even see that he has the exact same color scheme going on as Chris. Uh, it would be kind of fun if Topher were to do something like steal Chris's necklace. That'd be hilarious. Uh, Max, uh, speaking of stealing uh, uh, things from people, I'm pretty sure Max has been raiding Dr. Evil's, uh, Dr. Evil's wardrobe. You see, that time I referenced a movie from the 90s. Yeah, we're keeping it modern here tonight, folks, aren't we? But no, seriously, he's just that's the exact outfit that Dr. Evil wears in the in the Austin Powers movies. And uh, it's just sort of like, you just look at him, it's like, okay, so somebody said like, yeah, Dr. Evil and a little bit of Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory. Okay, we're good on this character, next. Uh, again, I'm not really, not really all that impressed by this guy. So I, I don't think we're going to be seeing Max hanging around too awful long. I imagine him to be another one of the early cuts. And uh, I've probably forgotten somebody, but I think I've talked enough about the characters, so let's go on. Anyway, uh, one thing that I really do like is that Chef uh, now actually has lines. These first two episodes, he's actually been talking a reasonable amount, about the same as he does in most episodes. One thing that just drove me really nuts during the uh, last time last time around was how Chef just really very rarely spoke for the first half of that one season. And again, you just look at that and just go like, how is this not a money-saving thing? And, you know, as long as Total Drama has been around, you'd think that you know, they'd have the money to work with to not have to take shortcuts like giving chef, very rarely giving chef lines or having not one, but two characters who just for all intents and purposes, don't speak. That, that just feels like a real ch cheat to the fans. But uh, anyway, 
I think that kind of covers everything that I had to say about what's going on with the characters. Now, uh, if you know me, that I try really hard not to make uh, predictions around here because you start making predictions, odds are you end up wrong. I'm more going to tell you what I think is going on in terms of what I what storytelling to me demands to happen next. And yes, sometimes that's going to be it's eliminations, but we're, go we're it's just going to be more of a discussion rather than predictions. Let's put it that way. Uh, now, as I understand it, uh, some places these episodes have are already aired. So um, I'm going to be going by the American release dates because uh, I live in the United States. So please, for the love of all that is holy, do not post any spoilers in the comments. Anybody does that, I, w I, I know ifs, ands, or buts about it. I'm banning you from my channel immediately. Okay, folks, I'm, I, I really got to lay down the law on this one. Uh, and uh, also, I do got, need to get this out there for you guys that uh, next week I am going to be insanely busy. I mean, basically, my ne next week is all about me taking these uh, certification tests for um, getting, basically, for basically starting my new career. And... This is, I am not kidding, a real life-changing thing. So I've got to stay focused on that because these tests aren't exactly cheap and I don't want to have to take them again. So, yeah, that's probably going to interfere rather seriously with uh, the total drama reviews next week. But uh, I will get through this the season uh, one way or the other. So you guys can can count on that. So just uh, I might get a little behind starting next week, but uh, you know reality comes first, even when you're dealing with uh, reality animated teens. But that's still a week away, so I think we're going to have quite a bit of fun with this season of Total Drama, and just I'm already imagining just how cool the next All Stars season is going to be. So basically, basically, everybody, we've got a lot of great total drama in our future. This, yeah, guys, it's it's time. It is time for total drama. It is time to have fun, and it, it is time to go crazy. So with that said, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi. And if you are one of my followers, uh, you'll notice that I did... A live tweet of the episodes for today. Uh, I'm gonna try. I'm pro I'm pretty sure I'm going to uh, keep doing that for at least the rest of the week, just because live tweeting is fun, and it gives me some practice for uh, making you know sarcastic comments when I do the uh, the actual reviews. So if you do find me entertaining, uh, just look me up on Twitter. Again, it's at Hoosier Jedi, just like my uh, YouTube name. And you can uh, join me at the f join in the fun. I do these uh, reviews on Eastern Standard Time, so I hope you can join me then. So, guys, until next time, take care and have a good one.